Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello there. Welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. Jessica Donovan here and welcome if this is your first time listening. It is lovely to have you here. I just enjoy sharing information, my thoughts, my opinions um, on this podcast platform so much. And I appreciate all of you who reach out to me um, via email or on Instagram, letting me know that you've enjoyed a particular episode. So head on over to Instagram, find us Natural Super Kids, um, and make sure you're following us along there because we share extra information and complementary information to what we share on the podcast um, over there as well. And I love hearing from you in my messages. Um, You know, any feedback you have on this podcast is always very welcome, as well as any ideas of topics that you would like me to be covering. So today we are continuing our conversation um, that we started last week. So last week we talked about the Australian diet guidelines, the Australian Dietary Guidelines for Children, what I feel is missing or um, needs to be tweaked in those guidelines. And we also talked about the National Healthy School Canteen Guidelines, which I had a good look at and shared more about on the podcast last week. So go back to last week's episode if you didn't have a listen to that yet. Today, we're talking about some, you know, Again, dietary guidelines that are put together um, by the Australian government. And it is, you know, specifically talking about today, specifically what we're talking about today, the health star rating. Now, you would have seen this as a consumer. Products that you buy on the supermarket will sometimes have a number of stars, a health star rating. So this is designed to help consumers choose at a glance, you know, a healthier option. But there are, as you can probably guess, some flaws that I want to talk about in this system. So the health star rating ranges from half a star up to a five star rating, with five stars being, you know, a very healthy choice. Apparently, the health star rating ranks similar food products. So it will compare, you know, a cereal with another cereal, for example, or a milk with another milk. And at a glance, you know, the idea is that you can quickly choose the healthiest option based on the number of stars that it has. It looks at four main nutritional factors. It looks at energy or kilojoules. It looks at sodium or salt. It looks at sugar and it looks at saturated fat. Now we talked quite a bit about saturated fat and how the dietary guidelines really need to catch up with the more recent research about saturated fat um, and the fact that it isn't as damaging to our health as we originally thought. But anyway, you can go back to last week's episode if you missed um, that conversation. So the more of each of these components that are that is found in a food, energy, salt, sugar, saturated fat. And when I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about calories. Um, The lower the star rating will be. Some beneficial ingredients can also improve a rating. For example, including fruits and vegetables, including protein, including fiber into a food product will help to increase the amount of stars that it gets. And, you know, food manufacturers are very aware of what they can do to make a food product sometimes even like appear more healthy than than it really is. So the system is designed so that you can buy a high star rated food with confidence that is healthy. But as I said, there are some major flaws within this whole health star rating system. So the health star rating often ranks processed food above whole food options. And if you've been listening to me for any length of time, you know, that really is the number one 
piece of advice that I give is to move away from so many processed packaged foods towards more healthy whole food options. But when we are looking at specific nutrients and compounds in isolation, the calories, the saturated fat, the salt, the sugar, it can be really easy to misinterpret how healthy a food really is because each of those detrimental nutrients or compounds within that food are only one component of the food. So it's really looking at these things in isolation. For example, butter. It's a natural food. It comes straight from a cow. There's a lot of health benefits to butter. It's high in fat-soluble nutrients. But because it's high in saturated fat, it has a lower score than a highly processed margarine. And again, last week's episode, we talked a lot about that being one of the really main issues, the big issues that I see with the Australian Dietary Guidelines is this outdated information that saturated fats are worse for us than these highly processed, industrialized vegetable oils. And it just doesn't make sense. You know, if we're looking at this from a um, a common sense perspective, how can a natural food be more unhealthy than a highly processed food? For, to me, it just doesn't make sense. So butter has a low health star rating because it's high in saturated fat. Highly processed margarine, um, full of those omega-6 vegetable oils that lead to inflammation, which is one of the, if not the biggest, really, you know, contributor to health conditions, both in kids and in adults, is said to be healthy. Another, uh, another example is milk. So plain, full-fat milk has a star rating of four. Now, that's not too bad, but an up-and-go has four and a half stars. So an up and go is healthier than a full fat plain milk. The up and go has added sugars, added additives. Um, Let me read you the ingredients of up and go. This is a four and a half star food product. Water, skim milk powder, processed, malted dextrin from wheat and corn, cane sugar, plant fiber, soy protein, vegetable oils, sunflower and canola, fructose, a form of sugar, oat flour, cocoa flavors, acidity regulator, mineral, calcium, vegetable gums, 460-466-407, stabilizer 452, vitamins C, B3, A, D2, B2, B1, B12, B6, and salt. So this is apparently healthier than a whole milk with nothing else in it. I mean, that's just crazy, right? And just as a little side note, when we see a food label with all of those added vitamins in it, to me, that's a red flag. You know, some people will think, oh, well, it's it's healthy. It's got all these vitamins in it. Um, but what that tells me is that they've needed to add a whole heap of vitamins to it because it is so processed and refined and there's not a lot of nutritional value in it naturally. So we know that an, a flavoured up and go with all those additives, with all those sugars is not healthier than a plain whole milk. But according to the Health Star rating, it is. Um, and, you know, this can happen across all sorts of different food types. Some lollies are, rate, are rated higher than a natural Greek yogurt. And we can guess because the Greek yogurt is high in saturated fat. But the lollies are high in sugar, low in saturated fat. Greek yogurt is a source of saturated fat. So sometimes it will rank as less healthy. You'll also see this with oils, as I talked about, canola oil, which is high in inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids. It's processed, ranks higher than olive oil and coconut oil because it's less, um, it's got less saturated fat in it. So as you can see, whole food unprocessed options often lose out because of how the ranking system works. And in last week's podcast episode, I shared that this, this, these two podcasts, last week's and this week's, have been inspired by one of our club members who um, submitted a healthy bliss ball recipe to her school canteen 
It had raspberries, oats, some seeds, some honey, and some coconut oil in it. It's actually one of our club member recipes um, that, that our members get access to. And it got declined as a red food that's not allowed because it's got a solid oil in it. And, uh, you know, coconut oil is a great example here. Coconut oil has, I think it's half a star or one star. So it's very low on the health star rating um, because it is high in saturated fats. So it's, you know, similar to, to butter in that respect. So the health star rating doesn't d- distinguish between natural um, versus added sugars. So this is another one of the flaws. So natural sugars are penalized the same as added sugars. So any food that contains natural sugars, such as fruit or dairy that is high in um lactose, which is a natural sugar in dairy, is ranked the same as food with processed sugar, with added sugar. So sometimes you'll see a muesli bar with added sugar getting a higher score than a natural Greek yogurt or other whole food dairy option because of the natural you know, lactose that is, that is included as well as the saturated fat that is included in those foods. The other thing is that food manufacturers can tweak the score that they get by adding ingredients. Uh, So foods will get a better ranking if they have higher levels of fiber and protein in them. So often manufacturers who are trying to make their products look healthier will add ingredients to influence their score. So one great example of this is Nutrigrain, you know, the, the breakfast cereal. It's a highly processed cereal. It's full of sugar, but it receives a four-star ranking because they've added extra fiber. Added fiber is a good thing. I'm not say, saying it's not, but it doesn't negate the processing, the sugar, and the additives that it contains. The health star rating actually doesn't even take additives into consideration. So you can add as many artificial additives to a food and it's not going to affect the score. It's purely based on those four um, nutritional ingredients that I talked about earlier, calories, um, um sorry, my mind just went blank. (laughs) Calories, salt, sugar, and saturated fat. Um, So, you know, if a food manufacturer can tweak their score by adding ingredients, that's quite dangerous. Um, Other products can add protein. Uh, This is common for things like yogurts and muesli bars. You know, we're seeing that on on the market, you know, high protein muesli bars, high protein yogurts. So the manufacturers will add processed milk powder or other protein powder to boost the protein levels and their star rating. And look, this isn't always a bad thing, but it's, um, you know, an example of the, the whole food is not being considered here. It's these isolated ingredients that, that, that can be added to adjust the score. Uh, Milo actually faced controversy for tweaking their rating. They received a four and a half star rating because the serving suggestion had skim milk in it and a tiny serve of Milo. But without the milk, the product should have received just one and a half stars. So Milo opted to remove their star rating altogether, which brings us to another problem with this whole system is that it's not mandatory to have a rating on a food product. So it's up to the manufacturers whether they want to include a rating on their products. And that's why you won't find many products with half a star or a one star rating because they've opted out of the system. There has been a recent review or, um, you know, a, a review of the system with a push to consider looking at adding added sugars rather than total sugars. Uh, but even with the reviews, there are still many issues with how the health star rating system works. Now, I'm aware that this information could just be like, oh, received as, you know, an extra load really. Like if this health star rating that's supposed to make it easier for us parents to choose healthier foods is flawed, then what do we do? So I want to talk through some of the things that I would recommend. First of all is to focus on whole foods. Now, this is basic. 
Um, you know, I know it's not easy to only get whole foods into our kids. And that's certainly not what I am recommending. You know, I definitely have packets in my pantry as well. I have two teenagers. Um, if there's no packets in the pantry, I get complaints that there's absolutely nothing to eat um, just as much as any other parent does. But we want to really focus on including more whole foods into our kids' diet as much as possible. And so when I talk about whole foods, really put simply, this is food as close to its natural state as possible, straight from a plant, straight from an animal with minimal processing. Now, to reduce your family's intake of processed packaged foods and move towards more whole foods, uh, one thing you can do is watch where you shop. Now, I know it's really hard to avoid supermarkets completely, but when you go to the supermarket, it is really hard not to get sucked into the specials at the end of the aisles, the packaging, you know, especially if you go hungry, um, which is something we should avoid doing. But whenever possible, we can shop at alternatives, farmers markets. I'm a huge fan of farmers markets. I go to my local farmers market almost every Saturday. Butchers, you know, fruit and veg stores, stay away from the supermarkets as much as you can. If the supermarket is the only available option um, or that's the most convenient option for you, try and stick to the, to the perimeter of the store. This is where you'll find the fruits, the vegetables, the dairy, the meat. Um, once you've got your basics, go down the aisles, the specific aisles that you need to go down to go down and try and avoid the temptation of all that packaged food, um, you know, much of which is on special and can be really hard to um, avoid, particularly when we're looking at our, you know, minimizing our food budget. So try and shop at farmers markets, uh, farm gates, um, you know, fruit and veg stores, uh, whole food stores, butchers, and avoid the supermarkets as much as possible. That way we are voting with our dollar and giving our money to, you know, the smaller um, you know, the smaller farmers and smaller businesses anyway, which I am a big fan of. The other thing you want to do is avoid all of the, you know, the, the health claims on the front of packages and go straight to the ingredient list. So turn that packet over, go straight to the ingredient list. Look, it's usually the smallest part of the, the food packaging because manufacturers prefer us to look at the claims that they are putting in bold on the front of the packages. So when you're looking at an ingredient list, the most prominent ingredient is always listed first. So if the first ingredient is sugar, that food product is mostly sugar. When we're looking at ingredient lists, a good rule of thumb is that the shorter the ingredient list is, the better. So ideally, we want to pick products with five ingredients or less. Of course, you know, some 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 food products that are that are quite healthy will have more than five ingredients, but that's a an overall general rule. Um, the fewer the ingredients, the less processed it is in general. And you want to avoid any ingredients that sound like chemicals. Avoid lists with multiple numbers. So if you see numbers on an ingredient list, they are additives um, that either prolong the life of a product or make it look better, taste better. Look, some additives are better than others. They're not all, you know, definitely no-nos. Uh, but if we can minimize the amount of additives within the food that we eat, um, then that is always going to be a good thing. So eat more whole foods, go straight to the ingredient list um, and don't shop when you're hungry either. That is a good one. Um, and also check the serving size. So this is particularly important for treats and cereals. The packet map might say a cereal only has say one teaspoon of sugar per serving um, or, you know, five grams of sugar per serve, for example. But often a serving size is as little as 30 grams. And most people, particularly teenagers, I can talk from experience here, will eat three to four, if not more times that. So check the serving size, um, how many are contained in each packet to see if uh, they are significantly smaller than you might think. 
So they're just a couple of tips when it comes to reading food labels. I also want to go through a couple of other labeling tricks to watch out for. As I said, you know, food manufacturers know that we are looking for healthier options and they can make food appear healthier than it really is. We want to try and avoid those claims on the front of the package and look over at the ingredient list. But I want to go through some of those claims. So percentage, less, reduced, um, these are words that are often used. So we often think that, you know, less sugar or reduced fat or 30% less sugar, for example, Um, is a good choice because our kids need to eat less sugar or less sodium. Um, Well, that's sort of debatable depending on, on, you know, what their um, intake is. Sodium or salt is one of those things that, you know, a moderate amount is, is known to be most healthy. We don't want to go too low. We don't want to go too high. And the majority of salt in our kids' diet comes from more of those processed packaged foods. So if we're moving towards more whole foods, that's going to naturally drop anyway. But let's look at an example of a percentage less, like a tomato sauce that claims it has 25% less added sugar than the same brand's regular tomato sauce. That's all it is. Um, it's it's less than the, their you know main kind of regular tomato sauce. The regular sauce, for example, though, is much higher um, in sugar or salt um, than any other brand. So the reduced salt or sugar option might not necessarily be healthier than others, but that's going to capture our attention. 25% less sugar, 25% less salt. Well, that looks good. I'm going to grab that one. But it's only less than the um, comparative brand's you know, main uh, product, if that makes sense. Many chip packets boast 75% less saturated fat compared to chips that are cooked in palm oil, for example. But the reduced saturated fat chips are typically cooked in a vegetable oil. And as you've heard me talk about before, vegetable oils are high in omega-6 fatty acids. They're inflammatory. So they're not really a healthier choice. So we want to avoid those percentage less than claims. Another claim we want to be careful of is no added. So you'll often see claims like no added sugar on flavored yogurts, lollies, soft drinks. But what are they replacing the sugar with? In most cases, the answer is artificial sweeteners. And artificial sweeteners are often worse for our kids and us than the actual sugar would be. So even if a product claims that it has no added sugar, it can still contain large amounts of natural sugar. Um, A common example of this is fruit juice. It contains natural sugars, um, but it still contains a large amount of sugar. Uh, So yeah, the the no added, again, we want to look at the ingredient list and see what is really going on here. Another claim is high in. This one's common with breakfast cereals, high in protein, high in fiber, high in B vitamins or antioxidants. It might also say they're enriched with a nutrient, you know, enriched with iron. Many of the micronutrients that are added to foods are synthetic and not easily absorbed. And actually, I shouldn't just say micronutrients because there is this trend towards protein being added to breakfast cereal, to muesli bars, to yogurts. Um, And, you know, I talk about the importance of protein. So it's easy to go to the supermarket and say, oh, I heard Jess talk on the Natural Super Kids podcast that protein's important. I'm going to get these high protein yogurts or high protein muesli bars. And look, some of them are going to be better options than alternatives, but we do want to look at where is that protein coming from? Where is that fiber coming from? Um, You know, how processed is it? Uh, How synthetic is it? How healthy is it? Uh, So when we're looking at those claims of high in, we do want to be careful. And it also doesn't tell us anything about what else is in that food. You know, it still could have a lot of sugar, a lot of additives and unhealthy ingredients. They've just added some protein or fiber to make it appear healthier. Um, And gluten-free, this is a big one because it is a lot of people assume gluten-free means that it is healthy. Look, gluten-free is important for some 
people with allergies, intolerances, or other reasons you may be avoiding gluten. But many gluten-free packaged foods still contains a lot of unfavorable ingredients. So just because it says gluten-free does not mean it is healthy. Gluten-free products can be high in sugar, inflammatory vegetable oils, additives. They can be highly refined. So if you are needing to be gluten-free or go gluten-free, you want to be predominantly sticking to whole food-based gluten-free options, things like buckwheat and quinoa and rice. There are some packaged gluten-free options that are going to be okay, but again, you want to look over at the ingredient list. Um, Also, those ticks you see on packaging you want to be careful of. So you see, um, you know, ticks that might have some of the previous claims on them, such as a source of whole grains. Um, Ticks are seen as positive and are designed to draw us in. You know, you've got, this is marketing people that are coming up with this stuff. These things are designed to sell more because the food manufacturers know we are looking for healthier options. But ticks can just be a clever marketing tactic. Again, we want to look at the ingredient list and look at that product as a whole. There are countless other irrelevant claims um, that can be that that we can start to see on the the front of food um, packages. So, for example, cheese might claim to be a hundred percent natural, even though most cheeses. Ah, unless they're sliced, grated. Well, that's 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 a conversation for another another podcast. These kinds of you know um, processed cheeses can often have extra ingredients, but you know cheese is 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 generally one hundred percent natural. So it's kind of irrelevant to put that on a cheese. You might also see that lollies claim to be ninety nine percent fat free, which is also true across the board, but lollies don't have a lot of fat in them anyway. They're full of sugar. So that 90, 99% fat-free on a lolly package, you know, that's true amongst pretty much all of the lollies that you're going to see. Brands will also often incorporate words such as natural. Um, natural really doesn't mean anything in terms of health benefits, but entire brands are developed around this term to make them appear to be the healthier choice. And, um, you know, I don't think there's really a lot of policing in terms of, you know, words like natural. So another, another, um, you know, example of of us wanting to look over on that ingredient list um, and, you know, make that the priority. So when you're looking at foods that you're buying in the supermarket, the ingredient list is where it's at. Ignore those claims. You know, in most cases, we probably want to ignore those health stars as well. I hope this has been enlightening for you. Um, I would really love to hear how you found this episode. Um, Reach out to us over at Natural Super Kids on Instagram, or if you'd prefer to email me, jessica at naturalsuperkids.com. I'd love any feedback or insights that you've had into this episode. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll be back next week. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.